So just a quick heads up, this might be a bit of a long video because in this video, I'm gonna talk about two new tools that I'm currently working on. And uh, it might take me some time to talk about that. So I wanna go ahead and apologize for that. So the two new tools are SmartEase and Smart Menu. So SmartEase is just a keyframe easing tool that I created probably about a month ago. And it's been sitting there waiting for me to wrap it up. So I need to wrap it up, create some marketing things and create a tutorial. So once I have everything created, I'll upload it to ukrami.com. I'm sure both of these tools will, will be available with our uh, Smart Tools bundle. But Smart Ease, we're gonna talk about this one in the next video. So definitely tune in and I'll show you everything it does. But in this video, we're gonna talk about Smart Menu. And this tool, I started working on it on Monday, which is two days ago. And lately I've been creating a lot of different Mogrids for Fox Sports. I mean, I've created all kinds of them. And I learned a lot about uh, problem solving. And I learned that there are certain steps that uh, I take a long time to do. Like uh, it's just sometimes when you create Mogrids, I mean, there's a lot of setup. And that's when I think of creating tools like Smart Menu. I realize I'm like, hey, I don't wanna do that again. So let me write it out. And so that way I can just click a button and it does it for me. And one of those tools or things that I constantly found myself doing would be the drop down menu. I hate creating that thing because you have to type it in every time. I mean, it just took a long time to do. And with this, it's much easier. So essentially smart menu, by the way, the name might change, the layout might change. I just want to show you like the early stages of this tool so that you can put in some input, any kind of feedback of the layout, the name, maybe any kind of other features you want to add. Let me know in the comments below because I, I enjoy interacting with you guys as I create tools. So on the surface, smart menu started out as a drop-down menu tool. It would create a drop-down menu tool for me. It would speed up my workflow and it did well. So for example, let me show you like the before and after. So I have this composition here. We have like all these different layers. They're all like a, like a flag of each country, like France, Germany. But I wanna create a drop-down menu to where I can pick a country and it will only show me that country logo or flag. How can I do that? So that's something I have to do constantly with Fox Sports. So normally I would create a new um, shape layer. So we go to new shape layer, it's just a blank layer. It's essentially, it's a null. And I would call this one controls. And that's where I would place all of my controls in. Okay, so that's good. So next I would go over here, expression controls. I would bring in the drop down menu. I would rename this. I would create my own items here. I would create an item for every single layer. I would name it, I would type it out. I mean, that took a long time and you have to do plus. And for some reason, when you hit tab, it doesn't really go to the next one, which would have been awesome. So you had to like click and type and then click. And I mean, that drove me nuts. Okay, so that's that. And then on top of that, when you pick a, a country or whatever, then you have to go over here and you know, go to opacity and create an expression for every single op opacity property to where, you know, link it up to the drop down menu and all that jazz. So that took some time. And I only have like what, 10 countries here, but I mean, with baseball, I think it was like 30 some teams or something like that. So, I mean, you have way more teams to work with. So you have to do all that stuff. You have to type it in, nightmare. Anyway, so then you have to do uh, opacity for visibility. Then, you know, each team has a primary and secondary color. So then you have to create like a primary color and secondary color control that you can later like reference and use in Mogerts. So I, I created that for each layer. Then uh, like I wanted to have an ability to pick, like to have a text that would list or give me the name of that team. Uh, and then I would create, anyway, it just lots of steps involved in this. It just, it wears you out mentally, physically. So let me show you how easy this thing can do that for you. Okay, so let me get rid of this drop down menu. So we have nothing. So we have the, the control, we have the layers, and this tool creates essentially on the surface a drop down menu based on your selection. So however you select the layers, like the order of selection is important. So I'm gonna select Canada and so on. I'm just gonna do it like this. So once I've made my selection, I'm gonna select controls last. So whatever layer you select last, that's the layer where it's going to create the drop down menu in. That's very important. So I made my selection. Then I would just go over here. I would call my drop down menu, whatever you want to call it. I called it countries. That's good. Then I would just run it. And all it would do, it would create a drop down menu. It calls it that. Then it has all my teams based on my selection. It puts it in the same order, which is helpful. I mean, that's awesome. But if I pick Germany, I don't see Germany. 
So it doesn't apply an expression to the opacity property. So let me undo this. So we're back to our selection here. So then I created another feature, this eye here. So when you select the eye, then it would apply an expression to the opacity to where when you pick a team, it would actually pick the team. So let's do the same thing. We, we're going to run it again. This time it creates the drop down menu with all of our countries here. If I pick Italy, it shows me Italy. So it basically applies an expression to the opacity and whatever team you pick, that's what it gives you. And trust me, that saves you some time. Okay, so let me undo this. Then if I wanted to create primary and secondary color, I would select this color icon. And again, all of these icons might change for right now. That's what I'm going with. So then I would run it again, the same selection. Then this time, here's what it does. On the controls here, it creates three options here. We have the countries, the same thing. Then we have color options. We have primary color, secondary color. And each layer has primary and secondary color control. So you would just set it up uh, manually like that. So for example, select Italy for right now. Let's do it, Italy. And then we're gonna go select Italy here. And Italy has primary, secondary. You can quickly say, here's the primary, here's the secondary, that's good. So then when you go over here, you can choose any team you want. But then when you go to Italy and you say, hey, primary color, it will show you, this is basically like a reference color. It shows you green, that's the primary. Secondary is red. At any time you can change it, you can update it in here. So that alone is very useful for Mogerts. I mean, you can link things up in other compositions. It's very helpful. So that's the second option. And then let me do this. So then you make a selection again. Then the third option here is text. So here's what it does. Again, it creates the same controls. It creates all of our color controls for each layer and everything. So it's working well. But then it creates a text layer that has our text based on what you selected. It takes all of that, puts it in an array, and basically you can choose a text. So when you go with something like Italy, it says Italy. And that comes in very handy because you can use it in other compositions. So not only that, okay, so you, you can do all that with like few clicks, which is super helpful. But it also, as you click, as you select this, each time you click, it moves all of these properties and the text into essential graphics panel of this composition. So now you have them all in here, which means this. So you can go to another composition, let me get rid of this, and you can bring in our flags layer into here. You can, um, let's scale this to maybe like 30%. Make sure I type it in. Okay, 30%. And then we're gonna move it in here. And so something like that, maybe we have a lower third, we have our first name, title here, and then we have the logo. But it does have essential properties, which means you can go over here and we have all of our properties in here. We can select a team like Germany. It will update it in here, give us color of Germany, primary, secondary, and so on. In fact, let's set them up right now. So let's do this. Let's maybe go with Italy. Let's select Italy here from the drop down menu. And we're going to set the primary for Italy green and then secondary red. Let's do maybe a few more Sweden. So let's select Sweden here. And uh, we're going to get the primary blue, yellow, and uh, let's do maybe one more, Greece, let's do Greece. Yeah, and so let's select Greece and select the layer, and we're gonna do primary, and then secondary is white. Okay, so now we can go back to the lower third here, and we can choose, uh, let's go with Sweden. As you can see, primary is blue, but I can say, hey, show me secondary, it's yellow. We can choose uh, Italy. Whereas the primary is green, secondary is red, you get the concept. So once you have it all set up, you can actually go over here and copy this drop down menu of the country. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into this control. So I have a control layer for the lower third that I'm going to paste it in. And all I have is just a drop down menu. It doesn't do anything, it's just empty, but I can link it up to it. I can just say, hey, uh, countries here, we're going to link you. I have a microphone here, it's kind of hard to see, to this menu right here. So based on what I choose from here now, Canada, it shows me Canada, but it also shows me the colors of Canada. I, I can do secondary. We also have a list. So I'm gonna show you how quickly I can set this up from these options to my text. So we have this title layer that I already have like an expression here. Instead of this text, I'm gonna say, hey, we're gonna link you up to this list that tells us the country, right? So Canada, so I can easily pick any country I want. It shows me the country, that's awesome. Then I can say, let's do Italy right now. Then I can say, hey, I also want the color of this. I'm gonna switch from that to the color. And then when I click away, it shows me this. So based on what team I choose, it automatically updates the logo, the name, and the color. And I'm doing this on the fly. And that's super, super helpful. So 
yeah, this tool, again, it's still in beta. I'm still adding things, getting rid of it, trying to find ways to, you know, when you hit delete based on your selection, it will delete all the things. And that's why I'm adding these three letters in here. It's going to search for effects that have that and it will delete it. And then I'm adding things in the uh, expressions, it's searching expressions. And based on what the expression you have, it will delete it. So lots of steps involved to create something like this. And it's a lot of fun. You just constantly have to walk yourself through this. Uh, yeah. I think this tool is useful for my kind of workflow. You might work differently, but just in general, I mean, I'm using it for logos and team, primary, secondary, all that jazz, but this can be useful for images, compositions, videos. I mean, you can find all kinds of different ways that you can use this. And uh, yeah, and I'm probably gonna add more things to it. I'm sure you guys will have some input for that. But I wanna thank you for watching this very long video. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your comments. And uh, again, if you're not a part of our mentoring group on Facebook, definitely go to ukramedia.com community. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.